A subject is grip handling suspension geometry. Suspension geometry, well, let's see handling. Good handling just boils down to having a full package. The right geometry, shock, spring, shocks, wheels, tires, brakes. That is, that is how you improve handling. But asking me about handling is such a huge, huge question. It's really hard to define the individual parts. So what we're gonna talk about today in handling is the back of the car. And we're going to talk about rear geometry. Now, I look at geometry in a Mustang in two different uh, types. In the front, the front geometry is based off of what that tire footprint is doing through the, all the driving events around a corner. Braking, turn in, mid-corner, corner exit. In my geometry program, I look what's happening each one of those steps through there, and I make adjustments to try to get the absolute best footprint on the ground. Now the back of the car is different. The back of the car is not turning anywhere. It's just following the front. So in the back, we're looking at geometry to improve grip and traction. Because the more grip you have, uh, the better braking you have, the harder you get up a corner, and the harder you get up a corner, the faster you are down a straightaway. Let's start with the upper control arm. And what I do with the upper control, let me back up, let me back up a little bit. There's two important parts of rear geometry. The SVSA, which is the swing arm geometry, side view swing arm, that dictates what your anti-squat is. And anti-squat is defined. Anti-squat is the how fast the car squats before it puts weight on the tires to get traction. So cars with little anti-squat will car down quite a bit before it starts putting pressure down. A lot of anti-squat, they'll start pushing pressure down right away. And the other interesting thing about anti-squat is that it's also anti-lift. It helps keep the car down. So Mustangs have a big habit of popping up in the back under hard braking. Anti-squat helps keep the back down. And so we'll start with side view swing arm. And that side view swing arm is if you take the control arms and you kind of draw out where they can converge out in space, that's going to be your instant center. And the instant center is a relationship to there's a line that goes from the bottom of the tire up through the, the uh, uh, center of gravity and your relationship to 100% to, to negative to positive. And with a standard Mustang, when you lower them, the instant center ends up being kind of way out in space. But what I do is I make adjustments, specific adjustments to bring it back. And I kind of put it where I've had the most luck with it over the years. It's kind of my best compromise for street strip and track. And to do that, this is the upper control arm, upper control arm module that we do. Now it is a lot tidier piece than the factory one. And also what I've done is the control arm is longer than factory and this point is moved down. Uh, that's in order to kind of get where I'm looking for for my side view geometry. The other thing, a couple things we do, uh, yeah, this brings up another question. A lot of people ask why I do things different than so many other people. And I guess my best answer is, I don't know, I've been doing it for so long, I just kind of learn things and the thing I like, I kind of keep. And I think from, from our perspective, the stuff we do, it's all the little things that we pay attention to that make a difference. For example, on this, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can't really see the rod end. You can't see the rod end because on either side there's a little thing called seals it. And I thought because that rod end is way up in the car and it's going to be almost impossible to clean that we put a seals it on it to keep dust and dirt out. So it's just one of the little things that I do. And also you notice that the control arm is curved or everybody else is straight. Well something we found early on on we, a lowered Mustang if you hit some pretty big bumps the uh, control arm wants to crash into the body. So all we did is just make a nice little bend to it so it never hits the body. The other half of the side view geometry is the axle brackets. And here's our axle bracket, and you notice I moved the pickup for the control arm about four inches, I think it's two and a half inches down. And what that does is it brings the control arm from, kind of brings it up a little bit because we want that pointing sort of up so it intersects with the upper control arm. And Here's an interesting thing about axle brackets. 
we were the first company to bring axle brackets to the market. Gosh, I'm thinking 1990 maybe, 89, 90. And from there, I mean, everybody and the brothers copied them. And on the 197 Mustangs, the popular things to be with a whole bunch of holes and this bar that kind of comes up to the back of the, the uh, axle, which I never did, really did like. So I have a much simpler uh, design. And this part right here, there's actually a 12 millimeter uh, nut zerk right in, in the axle at that point. So we put a 12 millimeter bolt in there because when, the, when you're using this thing back here, I mean, there's always the opportunity for that to bend a little bit. But when you're using bolt right to there, all of a sudden you've got it locked so it's not going to go anywhere. So it's pretty simple, but pretty effective. So that's, that's the side view. And I'm not going to tell you exactly where I put the instant center, but I'm going to tell you it's where I like it the most. Uh, I don't want people to copy it because every, everybody copies pretty much what we do. It's been like that over the years. Okay, the next part of the geometry of the side view is the control arms. Uh, this is our aluminum control arm and a couple things you'll notice is different for everybody else. First of all, it's a 5 inch rod end. Everybody else wants to use a great big 3 quarter inch rod end. And two things, while I went to the 5 inch, number one, we use a super uh, heavy duty, the uh, JMX uh, rod ends, which in most cases are stronger than a lot of the 3 quarter inch rod ends everybody uses. But also, this is less than half the weight of everybody else's uh, control arm with the uh, with three quarter. And then you're going to notice, wait, there's different ends. The different ends for, for a real significant reason. Uh, so underneath your, your S197, you're going to notice that the control arms splay out at the front. Okay, I, I don't like that. And for, for a simple reason, if you look at the look down at plan view and you look at those with a splay and you draw them to a point of convergence which is way behind the car and then draw that through the roll center that's kind of like your suspension roll axis and that's kind of like pointing up in the air uh, and that's not really what we're looking for so by offsetting bushings we're taking the front of the control arm and moving it in and the back of the control arm moving out so now we have parallel control arms every single race car I've worked on over the years as parallel control arms uh, just simply because that's the best way to get geometry and when we have parallel control arms there, there is no point of convergence which means your point of convergence is, is infinity and if it's infinity then the suspension roll axis is going to follow be parallel to the control arm uh, oh small little tricks we do I don't know if you can see this but a little rubber o-ring like that uh, because we get this so close uh, with a real small uh, bushing on this side, that's what I call a rattle, anti-rattle ring. Uh, just in case the rod end wants to like slide over, it's so it doesn't hit on the axle or the chassis and make noise or rub. So that's kind of like something we do that nobody else does. I also, just in, in recent months, uh, some people have shown or sent me some information that there are other other suppliers in the aftermarket are now using offset bushings. Be interesting to ask them if they know why they're offset. Uh, okay, now we're talking about roll center. And the roll center is the point in the back of the car wants to roll around. And in a Mustang, it's up in the middle of the axle. Uh, and you can pretty much feel it in the stock Mustang going around the corner, you feel that inside tire kind of roll up. And you can also feel a lot of extra weight in, and load going on the outside front tire. By bringing the roll center down, the car doesn't want to roll up as fast or as high, which means you don't have to wait to get back to the throttle. The biggest problem with a live axle Mustang going around a corner is you've got to be patient and wait and wait and wait till you've got enough uh, weight back on both tires so you can get to the gas. You get to the gas too soon, you get still too much load on the outside tire, and you overwhelm it, and the car gets loose, which everybody knows about Mustangs getting loose. By bringing the roll center down, it is going to roll up as much, so you actually get back to the gas sooner. 
in the front geometry, I bring the roll center up, which we'll talk about in another session. And the front geometry, uh, but bringing the front up and the back down, all of a sudden the whole plane that the car wants to roll around is far more level than it was then, like this. So it not only takes uh, extra load off the front, but it helps the front turn. And again, you get back to the gas a lot sooner. So how do we get the roll center down? We talk, talked about this a little before in that uh, in the roll centers where the panel bar crosses the center line of the car. So what we do is we just move it down in the car. This kind of gives you an idea how far down it goes. This is the original, and this is the bracket that goes onto the, the uh, chassis side of the car, the passenger side, and it just actually slides right up in. And then that's the only hole you have to drill, a little 7 16 locator. And we bring the handlebar bar all the way down, and there's only two holes, and that's only you just choose whichever hole gives, gets the panel bar level, the levelest. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but whatever one gets the levelest. Uh, if they're both close, use the bottom hole, because that brings it down. And then on the axle side, we've got this bracket that kind of slides up on there, and again, it brings it down. So that's, that's the roll center. 